The Data Science Trap You don't know what to do with your career. You hear about an interesting field called data science. It's challenging, but it pays well. You decide to become a data scientist. You try to learn coding, fail, cry, eventually succeed. You try to learn maths, fail, cry, eventually succeed. You get your qualification, you apply for your first job and... This happens again and again, and you struggle to even get an interview. Then you have this guy. Exact same qualifications as you, same ability, <laughs> same experience level as you. He applies and he gets an interview within a couple of days. The difference? Oh, I know a guy that works there. Listen, the principles that govern everyday life apply to data science as well. Which is to say who you know and the connections you have matter. You might be able to write the most intricate piece of code, but when you apply and there's 500 other people with the same dream as you, the chances of getting auto-rejected by some algorithm are real. But if you know the right person at a company, it's not to say you'll automatically get a job, but then you can get your CV out of the slosh pile, actually get it looked at, and be able to demonstrate the abilities that you do have. And if you won't take my word for it... For me, networking and specifically referrals is just uh, maybe the number one priority, uh, especially if you're looking for a new job. I would apply to a company without referrals, uh, only if there is no other options. You're probably gonna uh, kind of lose your chance if you apply to a company without the referrals, because yeah. the referrals will 100% uh, make your CV in front of, like, um, put your CV in front of the recruiting team, 100%. Yeah. Lorenzo is a lead data analyst at Amazon, with a banging YouTube channel, by the way. So you could say he knows a thing or two about landing high-level data roles. This video is not just going to be me lecturing you about how important networking is. Instead, you and me are going to take a journey to a networking event to see if I can master the principles of networking with the help of a coach. See, I had a networking event about six months ago and that completely flopped, so I decided I needed to bring in a true networking master. This is Taylor. No, not him, him. Taylor works in real estate investment and closes multi-million dollar deals on the regular because of his networking skills. So if he can do that, he can teach us data scientists a thing or two about networking. In fact, by the end of this conversation, Taylor had helped me develop five goals and strategies for this networking event that we're going to go to. And by the end of this video, you'll know if I achieved those goals. We started small because for all my introverts out there, the hardest part is having the confidence to go up and say something. I think the best first impression starts from within. If you put yourself in another person's shoes and ask how you'd want somebody to approach you and think from it in that mindset, I think that's what's going to give you that great first impression. Time and time again, people are selling to, to people left and right and they want to talk about themselves. And so if you initially have that question saying, hey, what are you working on? And then continue to dive in. You're investing their time and now. Armed with that icebreaker, my first goal is to have a conversation with at least five people that last two minutes each. It's going to be uncomfortable, but if I want to get to where I want to get to in my career, these networking abilities and the abilities to talk to strangers will be important. Are there any specific things I should avoid to stop myself coming across as being super sleazy and salesy and insincere whilst networking? When, when you go in there, make it a conversation. Don't make it like you're pitching something. If, if somebody is asking you a question, you're generally, ask, you're generally answering it, but then you're also asking a follow-up question to them. To, so it's, it's more of just that genuine conversation. Because if somebody is just listening the entire time, they, they might zone out. They might think like, hey, dang, how am I going to try and get out of this conversation? But if you're in a situation similar to me at the start of your data science journey, you're like, what am I meant to offer somebody who has five or 10 years of experience? So as a newbie, how can I still effectively network? If I were to, to go there and let's say I'm like brand, brand new, uh, I would try and connect one data scientist to another. So if there is some, if, if there is similar problems or let's say like a s similarities in the projects and they haven't been connected with yet, I would literally walk somebody over from, from a conversation that I'm having and saying, Hey, I think you should meet this person, walk up to them and introduce them to 
whoever you're trying to introduce them. Goal two, when speaking to people, I must be present and genuinely curious about their answers and ask follow-up questions. To quantify this goal and make it a little more grounded, by the end of the event, I should learn two ways data science is being used in other industries, connect two data scientists together and make at least one genuine LinkedIn connection. But I do have two more goals at this networking event and maybe these are the most important and the weightiest. See, the main keynote speaker happens to be giving a talk about a niche I'm particularly interested in and that's NLP and specifically few shot classification. So another goal I have is that during the talk, I need to ask the keynote speaker a question that is genuinely interesting and teaches everybody in the audience a thing or two about few shot classification. On top of that, I have a somewhat ambitious goal because at these events, they have speed talks where you can give a five minute talk about any data science topic of your choosing. So how would I go about gathering the confidence to go up to the organizers and be like, hey guys, I've just stopped being an intern just recently. I know some basics, but I want to give a talk about something. Yeah, well, that's that's where imposter syndrome comes in, right? And the so I mean, the simple answer is you absolutely should do it because one, it, you're going to be talking about the, this eventually, and it's the first one's going to suck, but then the next time you do it, it's going to get a little bit easier. The next time you do it, it gets a little bit easier. Now that doesn't help your case in terms of calming the nerves in any way, shape, or form because the imposter syndrome is still going to be there. Okay, so those are the goals. I need to get going now, otherwise I'm going to be late, but wish me luck, people. Going pretty good actually, just having a chat and what have you, so definitely completing some of the goals and tasks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got it. Do you guys actually sell that merch? Surprisingly large amount. Boom, pretty much done now. Um, yeah, went pretty good. Nice scenery. I'll give you the full review because I am very tired and I don't know if you can hear my voice. I have been talking a lot. So yeah. Boom! I am back. Totally the same day. Ignore the lighting. And yes, I've never had a beard. But anyway, on to my goals. You'll notice I didn't film every single little bit because that would have been weird. If I was just talking to someone and I was like, oh, okay, so what are you working on? Three, two, okay, two minutes, sorry, I gotta go. So yeah, I, ju I just did a couple of bits and honestly, it was really good, but you aren't here to hear me waffle, are you? You're here to hear about results. And let's start with goal number one, which was to talk to five people for at least two minutes each. And may I smashed this one, honestly, once you get yourself into that mentality, not even mentality, once you talk to the first person, it's much easier to talk to more people because a lot of people there are nervous. So you could tell they're waiting for you to include them in the conversation. So that was pretty easy. And to keep conversation going, what Taylor said was excellent advice. Just ask them what they're working on and then just ask them to expand and you get to learn more they get to express themselves and also feel more confident because they're talking about a field where they are, at least in the context of the two of you, they are the expert. So that raises their confidence and honestly, really good. And that kind of bleeds into goal two. Yes, I did find out about how data science is used in more than two industries. I think the most interesting was one guy, he does work with video games where they use object and image detection to search for bugs in the game, essentially, which is really interesting. So obviously they use a lot of OpenCV and libraries like that, and that was super interesting. Um, there was a bunch more, but not gonna bore you with, with those. And the last one, connect two data scientists. I connected somebody who was, he's a data engineer now, but he was a computer scientist before. And I connected him with a computer scientist who hasn't even gotten into data science yet. He was just there to kind of gauge the vibe. 
So because they had a similar background, like Taylor said, it was easy to make that connection and, well, I didn't stalk them to see how the conversation went on, but I introduced them. I think that's pretty good. Okay, and then the biggest ones. I actually couldn't ask a question because the speaker who was meant to be there giving a talk on NLP and few shot classification did not make it. So there was a last minute replacement and I wasn't as knowledgeable in the area that the speaker who replaced her was. I probably still could have asked something, but it's a fail on that one. And it's also a fail on asking to give a talk, but this is a temporary fail because I didn't have the awareness to ask about it whilst I was there. However, you and me are gonna turn that X right now into a tick. Because as we sit here, I'm going to put in my application for this data science festival in October, the Oktoberfest Data Scientist Festival, which is a lot bigger. I'm putting in an application to be one of the speakers. Yes, me with a year and a bit of data science experience. And you're gonna watch me put in the application and hopefully I make it. So if I get accepted, I wanna see you there in October. Here we have it submitted people so I will be updating you this might be a to be continued depending on if they accept me and if they do I'm looking forward to sharing that journey with you as well hope you enjoyed this different sort of video a like and a comment is always great I guess or whatever you meant to say in these outros sign up for my newsletter it's also great giving you tips like this which are like real-world tangible things linked in the description